Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today our motion is that this house will personally end Kim jong -il's regime. Before we go, I will first state our definitions. We define forcibly as using political or economic pressure and end as to change the ideology of Kim jong -il's regime. As the first speaker, I would propose our policy and the needs and benefits of it. Our second speaker, heads on will state the practicality. And finally, soon we will rebut and sum up our, our debate. The proposition's policy is that by using political and economic sanctions and promoting joint enterprises such as the Kaesong International Free Econ Economic Zone, we can weaken North Korea's economical structure, which is currently so socialism and eventually convert it, in, it into a free market economy. By economic sanctions, we could weaken North Korea's economic foundations and make them vulnerable to foreign pressure. By, <laughs> by, promoting, <coughs> by promoting more joint enterprises, we can gradually open up North Korea's economy and make them rely more on foreign technology and capital, which will make their economy dependent on foreign economies and weaken Kim Jong-il's power to manipulate North Korea's economy. Also, through this process, this house could gradually open North Korea's isolated economy and influence North Korea by exposing them to the free market economic structure and make the people realize the disadvantages of their closed structure and eventually make North Korea fall from the inside. This change in the economical structure would mean the fall of Kim Jong-il's socialist regime. For opening the market and changing the structure would mean that Kim Jong-il's socialist power has fallen. Ending Kim Jong-il's regime through this policy can bring an end to many human rights issues under Kim Jong-il's regime and bring, bring an end to North Korea's terribly inefficient economy. Currently, action must be made through possible means to end on to bring an end to the numerous human rights issues concerning occurring under Kim Jong-il's regime. The most concerned issue is the worsening food prices. According to a report made by Amnesty International, over 12% of North Korea's entire population are suffering from severe hunger. It also reported that one of the main factors of this crisis is that it's the misconceived policies by Kim Jong-il's regime and the continued restrictions of freedom of movement and information, lack of transparency, transparency and hampering of independent monetary, which has meant that food aids don't really reach those most in need. Also, other human rights issues concern child, child mal malnutrition and the practice of public ex execution. Also, also, we should bring an end to North Korea's terribly inefficient economy. Currently, North Korea is facing many economical and material barriers due to the isolated situation under Kim Jong-il's regime. They are in lack of both technology and capital, making them almost impossible to overcome the current situation by themselves. Also, this inefficiency works as a catalyst for the human rights issues, so by changing Ending Kim Jong Il's Kim Jong Il through this policy is necessary and beneficial. Through this policy, we believe. Yes. Through this policy, we believe that problems concerning human rights and e economy in North Korea will be solved. All sides, the proposition, believe that by using political and economic sanctions and joint enterprises we can change the economic structure and eventually break down and end Kim Jong-il's <coughs> regime. Now, Hedon will state the practicalities of our policy. Thank you.
The rule of Kim Jong-il over DPRK has brought many concerns to the world by not being cooperated in making a world a peaceful place. Under such conditions, we agree to the fact that there is something that must be done about the situation in North Korea and Kim Jong-il's regime. However, it is not necessary, not practical, and not beneficial to use economical and political forces against North Korea. I will explain why it's neither necessary nor practical and not you show it is why it's not beneficial and provide a counter policy and mean it will conclude with the summary of our opinions. Ladies and gentlemen, as the first speaker of opposition side, I can announce with confidence that we have won this debate. <laughs> first, first. <laughs> First, I'd like to point out that this policy is not necessary because it concerns using forces, economic forces, and political forces. We must not use political forces or economical pressure on North Korea anymore. The United Nations have tried to improve the situation of DPRK many times already, putting in their best efforts to finish off Kim Jong-il's regime by using political force already. However, ladies and gentlemen, has the situation improved? How much do we gain from all the political and economical pressure we used on DPRK? <coughs> Does the policy that they are suggesting differ significantly from the data of resolutions made by UN, United Nations? Are they are the policy this policy better than all the resolutions of United Nations combined together? Are they are they can they ensure that this policy actually works? Is it actually much different, even better than all the past efforts to put together enough to bring enhancements to this situation? Due to this, it cannot be denied that this policy is not necessary. Also, economical sanctions against North Korea should not be used. By enforcing economic sanctions, North Korea's economy will suffer greatly. But will Kim Jong-il suffer? Will his government suffer? It will be the commoners that will suffer from this sanction. We are here to improve the conditions of DPRK the concept of North Korean, not to make the suffering no, people of the UK face more difficult Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I believe you mentioned that Kim Jong-il will not suffer from this economic sanction. Can you prove why not? Okay, there's economic inside the DPRK that earns money itself and only they're just trading for an extra Okay. <laughs> Do you really think that by trading, Kim Jong Il, <laughs> the North Koreans will actually benefit it? Will be the Kim Jong Il that will benefit his government? Okay. <clears throat> now I'll explain why it is not impractical. It is impractical. Why it is impractical? <laughs> According to an article from Council on Foreign Relations, it is obvious that not all the countries have on, of the world will agree that force must be used on DPRK to improve the situation. Countries such as China are not likely to change their current policy on using economic pressure on DPRK. They'll not agree. Okay. According to Daniel Peterson, a Korea specialist and director of East Asia Non-Proliferation Program, the Center for Non-Proliferation Studies and Monitoring said that Chinese trade and investment <coughs> in North Korea now totals more than $2 billion per year. Do you think China will be stupid enough to abandon the $2 billion? Considering such a great amount of monetary investment, isn't it obvious that China will not take economic force as its, as its main strategy? Wouldn't they veto the resolution that concerns this policy? China has many other reasons not to, per not to give economical pressure to North Korea. Currently, North Korea's allegiance is important for China as a blockade against U.S. military dominance of the region and the rise of Japanese military. It is just simply impractical with Chinese veto power in UN to pass any resolutions regarding economical sanctions. Thank you. Young, young, please. 
Sorry? Using the rule of something that than is necessary. Huh, that, that sounds kind of similar to like cheap or frugal. So what's the word for pertaining to the economy? Economy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> we something new that. Okay, let's give uh, Dijon a round of applause. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the second speaker of the pro side, I'm here to explain the practicality of our policy. But before I go on to more explanations, I would like to rebut some of the things the opposition side said. Now, um, listening to while listening to opposition side's argument, I think they mistake our policy as to um, meaning destroying the North Korea. We don't mean that. We just mean economic reform. As a, and again, we don't destroy North Korea. Just we don't. We just don't like Kim Jong Il. And, and, <laughs> and, and secondly, they talked about um, the, the innocent people going to suffer from economic sanctions. But as I'm going to explain later in my speech, our um, policy is not as stupid as that. And um, now that being settled, let me return to our policy proposal. Um, our policy is not only necessary and beneficial. No, um, it actually can be realized. First of all, we've got support from most countries in touch with North Korea. Um, as for U.S. and Japan, they um, have been in favor of regime change for years, and um, and I think you know that since the Bush administration, U.S. has been unfavorable for um, for North Korea, and um. And uh, the opposition side mentioned that the China has veto power, and that will be the problem to our policy. But let me explain this. Ever since the nuclear um, test that North Korea did last year, China hasn't been so friendly toward Kim Jong Il. Well, yeah, maybe it doesn't like um, losing the losing the losing the Do money. I? And no, thank you. Yeah, North Korea, but um, actually, according according to this article in Australian Sunday Times, Chinese have been openly debating. I mean, openly debating about regime change in North Korea, and that and that shows that Chinese attitude toward Kim Jong Il have changed over years. And it is not it is not likely that they will use their veto power to get rid of um, our policy to uh, maintain Kim Jong Il regime. And secondly, economic sanctions have been effective and will be effective. And about um, innocent people be suffering from our our policy, we have we have we can prove that um, our policy would not hurt so many people. Because you are. I'm just I'm, no thank you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway um. <laughs> With, I don't know if you remember the incident of Macil Bank um, account freeze. That's the bank that Kim Jong Il keeps all his money, all his private money in. And last year, U.S. freeze froze its account. And since then, after six, only six months, Kim Jong Il resigned. Kim Jong Il resigned to six-party talks because he couldn't bear without his luxuries. And more. And thirdly, thirdly, um, our um, economic reform in. North Korea is actually plausible. Currently, there are mainly two groups of people in North Korea, those in favor of reform and those not. Only thing keeping North Korea from reform is reluctant Kim. But if we use our um, sanction powers to pressure Kim, we would um, most likely to receive, um, achieve what um, we want. The end of um, Kim jong Il's return. Um, thank you for listening, and Sinjie will, Sinjie will sum up our argument. Thank you.
Okay, after Nayan's speech, uh, again, we'll have four speeches, so please think of what you would say for either side. <clears throat> okay, let's give um, let's give Nayan a welcome. Okay, good afternoon. Um, trying to explain the unnecessary and impractical aspect of the of the policy and the proposition science has given. And following his speech speech, I would like to question the benefits of their policy. But before I move on, I think that's been a mistake. We never said you got um your heart is saying that you, you will destroy North Korea. We never said that. Okay, to move on. Our heart str strongly believes economic and political forces are not beneficial. Um, economic sanction, sanctions. They're supposed to persuade rulers to change their policy. Any policy that threatens the international peace, which is the case of Kim Jong-un, they're supposed to. It's a great tool, but it's a force. It's a weapon. And often, too often, it seems that the sanctions harm innocent victims <coughs> and even fail to meet the policy end. The prophesied president of information. No, the prophesied president their policy of economic pressure. But ladies and gentlemen, why are we here today? For what are we debating today? I actually thank Hujo for giving me the answer. I copy and paste her idea. We are here not only to stop North Korea threatening the world peace, but also to protect North Koreans and their human rights. Um, and if the policy passes, and more force is put in DPRK, it will not be Kim Jong Un's surface, but it, there will be a huge impact on the people, on the people who are dependent on the needs, on the on the aids, and in desperate need. This policy, unlike its purpose, will not. Um, will just end up giving more difficult times for the people who are already suffering. And also, I'd like to point out that the, this policy is currently no, um, is currently in process. The U.S. is putting much pressure on the, the NK, but they will not listen. We are here to find a new solution, a new effective solution, not to find another, not to make another identical one that has failed. This policy should not be and cannot be passed. Now I will move on to our our next <coughs> No, our stance is that we will not use economic or political force. We instead we believe negotiation is the best answer. The best answer for now. Uh, we're not saying we will have a negotiation <coughs> where North Korea and other countries will together and agree obeyably on any any ideas and have Kim Jong Un change his ideology with a smile on his face. No, we find two problems in today's negotiation and real existence. First it is that it is even hard to involve North Korea to negotiation. But however, if we show a sign of concession, a concession unlike how the U US is doing now, we will take a step backward and 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 then <laughs> when North Korea gets involved in the negotiation now. Um, Kim Jong Il will be more flexible, and he may stop causing more troubles, like for people's attention and fear, like he did with his nuclear weapons. And at that moment, North Korea and other countries will, will make a deal. Here, the other country refer to the, not do not refer to the all nation in the world, but the six party nations. Um, for example, the U.S. is forcing much economic restraints on the. NK. And because of this, North Korea cannot withdraw any money for investment, which, de which damages its economy. And, um, and this triggers that little Kim Jong Il to act so strongly for fear of fear. However, the United States alleviates the economic sanctions. We believe that um, North Korea will ret return to the Sixth Party and negotiate. Ladies and gentlemen, our first attempt for negotiation may have failed. However, that does not justify the use of force, the use of economic or political pressure. The, the use of economic and political pressure will make the situation worse, I believe. And we must not give up and turn to the way that seems easy, using force, but turn to the right way of, of 
um, turn to the right way, even though it seems difficult, but we have to say it. I confidently um, suggest that if you follow us, our heart strategy, we will um, slowly and gradually nurse prayer will change and will solve this problem. We have volunteers. Okay, I'll ask Junza. Uh, have you given one this semester? Mm -hmm. no, no, that's good. And Tanji. And do you guys have a preference? <coughs> okay, Tanji. Proposition. Thought that um, the uh, proposition is basing their um, entire policy under the assumption that Kim Jong Il will be, be will become desperate if the international community gives uh, pressure to the regime. And like, not uh, last year when North Korea tested their nuclear uh, their bombs, uh, uh, U.S. and the uh, well, the UN decided to give economic and political sanctions against the North Korea. And North Korea survived its way through, and that's why they decided to cancel their sanctions. And now we have a prior knowledge, and we have past experience that North Korea can sustain itself against those economic and political sanctions. So I, I don't think it's going to work. And uh, in their pr prime minister's speech, they also said that food crisis is over 12 percent, uh, uh, and like 12 percent of the population is. Uh, suffering from hunger, and if we cut down, uh, uh, if we cut the uh, economic aid to North Korea, then uh, more people are going to suffer from hunger, and that's not going to help North Korea at all. Thank you. Okay, thank you both, uh, of my four speakers. Um, at this point, the opposition team will have the opportunity to wrap up their case. Um, We'll be uh, delivering these remarks. Okay, let's give her a welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's evident that we won this debate today. This House has proven to you that this policy, the policy to use force to end the regime of Kim Jong il, is not necessary, not practical, and not beneficial, and therefore should be failed. This speaker would like to rebut the arguments the Proposition Society has made today and conclude with a summary of the arguments of this House. First of all, the Proposition Society has mentioned that they will use to influence the economy. However, there are two reasons that this does not make any sense. First of all, the citizens of DPRK do not know they are being treated unfairly. They, they, are, treat, they are treated as very low le level, but they, they do not know this. This is because they have been, they have been given, they have been brainwashed since they were young. For example, they have been forced to read books about Kim's birth, and they are made into complete myth, such as there were rainbow lights dancing on the day of his birth. 
And second of all, to England, they must change the system before they do anything else. But to ensure this, who has the power to do this? Who has the power to force a country that the country's government only has the power? And who has the power of the government? Only Kim Jong-il has that, and Kim is not stupid enough to estimate what will happen. And now I will continue with our, the summary of our arguments. This policy is promoting the use of force in ways of econo economic and political pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, does this sound familiar? This is repeating the current status quo. What difference is there with the method we used before? This policy is unnecessary since it is useless to pass another policy no, thank you, that is identical to the one that has been already failed to make much progress. The purpose of the debate, what is this purpose? The purpose of this debate is to solve the problem of Kim Jong-il and DPRK because of the policy we used before. The policy which included, no thank you, included the use of economic and political pressure made no difference and left the problem unsolved. Therefore, it is evident that making this policy identical to the one that failed is unnecessary. Second of all, this house has also mentioned that many countries, such as China or Republic well, of Korea, no, thank you, not, will not pursue using the force to stop Kim Jong-il since they do not have any incentives to do so. Also, is it China, the country that is providing great monetary funding to DPRK, likely to support any resolutions, or pol resolutions and policies in and out of the UN that considers force after a great input According to our research and the answers of the Chinese, Chinese foreign minister, he said that they have been they have been investing two billion dollars to DPRK, and is they are confident that that China and DPRK relations will remain the same. It is also undeniable that forcibly trying to end Kim Jong Un's autocracy over DPRK will not only cause more harm than good to the people under its rule, but will also become a larger threat to world peace. Due to the heavy sanctions that prevented DPRK from entering the world market and stopped it from trading with other nations, DPRK suffered economic difficulties. And the solution, what solution did they have? The solution was using force. Why did DPRK make nukes? They made it because they were in, they were in a difficult situation. It was their last hope. Just a year ago, did you not worry there would be no more war peace and that a nuclear war may start? The whole world was terrified at this news. The force used on DPRK, the financial restraints forced on DPRK led us to the situation, and force brought us nothing but a terrible result. Ladies and gentlemen, it is evident that force brings no good results, and it will not bring any benefits to not only to the suffering people of DPRK, but it will become a threat to the world. We have presented an alternative policy, a policy that, that we strongly believe will bring some improvements to the situation. This House believes that it will be more effective to continue negotiations, but alter to a different method. This House plans to promote negotiation by making the other countries against DPRK to assign a concession first and step back, so DPRK will become more flexible and come to negotiate. Force may seem like an easier and faster method to solve the problem, but what is important, ladies and gentlemen, the easier way or the right way? For such reasons, ladies and gentlemen, this House strongly believes that this motion has too many flaws and therefore should be failed. Thank you. gentlemen, what the opposition team today is doing is neglecting the truth. The severe truth that many tons and tons of people starve to death. The truth that North Koreans know that they are being treated as they are treated. The truth that these people are suffering under the corrupt rule of Kim Jong-il and the truth that North Korea's economy is worsening. Let me rebut, rebut their arguments before I go on to summarize uh, uh, the proposition team's uh, main points. First, I would like to rebut. rebut. Charles said it, it is not necessary, that this policy is not necessary because, because we are using forces. 
And instead, they made a new policy negotiating. They said this policy is not necessary, uh, impractical, because it was identical to the one that failed already. However, negotiations. What? You are. No, sir. <laughs> How will this be more effective, more practical than using forces when they don't even listen? There was one, one case, the sunshine policy. We tried to uh, be as fair as we could, but they made nuclear bombs. Also, they must have mistaken our policy because in our policy, we have mentioned that this force we are using is economic san sanction. And by economic sanction, we will show how their their re regime now is wrong. And by don't you think that economic sanction that economic sanction will cut off all the trading with other countries and make the people even more suffer even more? You are here. To let me let me tell you that <laughs> people are already suffering. And uh, you mentioned that the food aid will be cut off too. However, the food aid doesn't even go to the people there. So even if there is economic sanction, the people, more than the people suffering, Kim Jong-il will suffer more. He will realize that his regime has fallacies and by, uh, by, uh, Case. Also, they said that it is impractical because Kim Jong Il will not uh, will not suffer when economic sanction happens. However, the, the purpose of economic sanction is to cut off Kim Jong Il's economic powers. People will not have any changes; they are already suffering. Also, Nayeon said it is not beneficial, but it is. It will be beneficial because it will make them open up. They are also presuming that North Korea will agree when they negotiate. What what good is it? What good is it if they don't agree when we negotiate? That is why their policy fails. The force we put, uh, the force we are using, will be effective because we will forcibly make them open up. Okay, let me now present our arguments, ah, some of our arguments. Today the proposition proposes this policy that this house will use economic sanction and joint enterprises to encourage North Korea to open up and change their economic structure. Our policy meets the needs, the benefits, and the practicality. That is why our pro policy stands. Thank you.